to the Bee Ninjas podcast, where you get an all-access pass to see what happens behind the closed doors of a fast-growing global bookkeeping and financial reporting business. Hey, everyone, and we're back on again for another episode of the Bee Ninjas podcast. This is the third Working in Public series that I'm recording with Wayne. And again, today we'll be sharing our updates, challenges, and lessons learned. Hey, Wayne, how are you going? Doing real well. How are you, Meryl? Good. It's been a busy week, but the course, I was going to say launch, but we're now into delivery mode. That's all been happening. So looking forward to getting in and giving an update throughout the course of the episode. That's exciting. So let's get into it. Absolutely. Why don't we start with your objective from last week and how you went against that? Sure. So I want to lay out a bit of a scenario. So last week was actually my triplets' fifth birthday. So we set out to surprise them on Thursday morning and put them in our minivan and drove them to Disneyland. So we had a surprise Disneyland trip. And I also moved us into our new US headquarters. So I'll be totally transparent and upfront and say time got away from me. And you'll hear more about that in my lessons learned. But my objectives for the week were first to book and close two additional VCFO advisory offerings. And I tabled that as I believe I first need to determine a more appropriate sales strategy and entry point. My second objective was to build a demo board and share with all our clients on our two highest subscription plans. And I ran into a bit of a challenge with accessibility to our software platform after our initial demo. A lot of it was just based on the geography of where the data is being stored here in the US and where our original subscription was created, which was not in the US. So I was working through a bit of just logistics within the software tool. So I pushed that to this week and you'll hear more about that also in some of my challenges. And lastly was to finish the certifications. So I'm 65% completed. There's about 45 classes and I made my way through quite a number of them. And I did attend my first of a handful of supported implementation calls, which really opened my eyes to a number of things that will be shared later in the call. So how about yourself, Meryl? What objectives did you set for yourself last week and how did they go? I had three objectives last week. The first one was to deliver the first week of group coaching. So the previous week I had released the first batch of content and then the group coaching call was to discuss that content answer any questions from the group and see how they'd gone with implementing. And really, I needed to turn up to that call, turn up prepared and make sure that that went well. So that was achieved. So I can say that that was done. And I may have mentioned this in passing in the last call that originally I was planning to do one group coaching call. And then I realized that what e-commerce business owners need to know is different to service business owners and different to people who are virtual assistants and aren't coming from a business owner perspective. So I actually did three group coaching calls this week. And I think that worked really well because the answers and the things we were discussing were very specific to the people within that group. Even though that created a lot more work for me in terms of separate content and different group times, I think that it made the calls more valuable. So I'm glad that I went that route. The second objective was to publish course content this week ahead for next week. And so the e-commerce content went up this morning and the service business content is written, but I still need to record the videos for that. So I've got a bit of work to get that done today because it's due out on Thursdays. Number three was that I had seven people signed up for the course last week and I wanted to find an extra three places and to get to 10 people. And I didn't quite get there. I signed on two more. So we've got a total of nine people in their courses at the moment. That's odd. Yeah, I'm stoked with that. Really happy to have people that were willing, they saw enough value from what we described in the course landing page to be willing to sign up to something that didn't exist a few weeks ago. I'll move into challenges next. And there's a common thing with my challenges, which are creating the course. So juggling the group calls, which are topics from the previous 
week and making that, making sure that content is fresh in my head when I'm on the calls, as well as creating the content for the next week. So that's one challenge. But the underlying theme is juggling a product launch with all of my day-to-day duties within the business. And we actually had a rush job come in from a client. And so I'm back on the tools and actually getting involved in quite a lot of the accounting for that. So it's actually been a pretty busy two weeks. I've had a conference two weeks ago and then worked this weekend. So now after almost three weeks of working every day, I'm starting to feel tired. But having something like this public accountability is really making me push through to make sure that everything related to the course is still going well, as well as trying to juggle everything else in the business. What about you, Wayne? So some of the challenges that became apparent to me is the first was I'm unclear if I rolled out the right buying experience. And I think this is important, but I'm not sure I have a large enough sample set yet to make a clear determination. Some of my thoughts and the way we were approached it initially was we had rolled out a survey asking some of our clients that had previously expressed a desire for virtual CFO services or KPI dashboards, what their particular interests were in regards to what service offering. And based on those responses, we also had a series of questions that led them through some of the educational piece on what we might be offering. So with the survey, the last question was, would you be interested in learning more about our service? I took the approach of utilizing, as I mentioned last week, our proposal software, Better Proposals, to create essentially the sales copy that I would have otherwise spoken to them about in a demo or in a one-on-one call. I didn't get any signed proposals back this week. I did reach out for feedback to see if perhaps I priced inappropriately or I wasn't clear enough in my sales copy to get them engaged to a position where they were ready to buy. The second was really the question, am I addressing the right problem in clearly sharing our solution? So I thought based on the survey feedback that it was a lack of visibility or clarity of their business performance through their numbers and that the solution was a KPI dashboard. But again, nobody jumped on the proposal. So I'm thinking back to my corporate role with Hewlett Packard and having led teams in financial reporting and analysis. And really for us, for every engagement, the jump off or the baseline was in helping our programs build a budget. And from that budget, we then had an opportunity to meet with them and really understand what their goals were in regards to revenue growth or staffing or expense optimization within their labor teams. So I'm trying to understand and address a bit further, how do I present this as a sales strategy, but then also how do I position our offering and make sure I'm answering the right problem? So it gets into a bit of my lessons learned. So I'll just jump in. And first, it's really, I learned something from the way we had set objectives and the objectives that I set And I feel like I was confusing objectives and goals. And to be clear on a goal, it really just means you have an idea. You have a point somewhere in the future in regards to what you're wanting to achieve. And objectives are really the actions that you're taking to achieve the goal. So I jumped on one of your objectives and I feel like I stepped forward with a result and I wasn't clear on what. I was going to do to achieve them. So that was my first lesson learned. But the second referred back to the challenge I faced. And that was customers buy solutions to address critical problems that they're facing in their business. And you need to get clear on what that unique problem is and how your offering will solve it. So a lot of it was around understanding and spending some time reflecting on what is the problem and trying to dig a little deeper into that. So I'm interested, Meryl, what are some of the lessons learned that you've achieved this week? I've got two different lessons that I want to discuss. One is very specific, and then the other is a much broader business lesson. 
So the first specific lesson is that this week when I was creating content, I collaborated with a colleague to do some specific e-commerce content. And I'm really happy with the end result. He had some insights and expertise that he could really add a lot of value to that particular topic of the course. But what I didn't take into account is that content creation with someone else actually takes a lot longer. So I would say it would have taken three times the amount of time than if I had done it myself, even though I may have not been able to achieve the same quality of content because I didn't necessarily have all of that knowledge. But I didn't build that into my week. So I didn't take into account that we might have different training styles and that I would need to brief him on our style and also bring him up to speed on what people in the course would already know about and how we do things like work examples and create tasks. And then we also co-recorded the content. So it was just a lesson in planning out time when you're working with someone else because there can often be unexpected time that you don't build in. And would I do co-content collaborations again? Yes, definitely. But I would just make sure that I allow more time to do that. My second lesson is actually more of a broad business lesson and it's less related to creating the course content, but more the fact that my week was derailed by a last minute urgent request from a client. And that's not usually how we run being ninjas. We're very organized and systemized and we have a schedule of when everyone's working on what are usually recurring bookkeeping tasks. And the fact that we had to pull different team members off other jobs, I had to jump in. That was just a reminder to me of the kind of business that I don't want to run and made me reflect on our ideal client. And so that was just an interesting thought process that I went through. But also I feel like generally our business is the systemized, organized kind and we really work well in training our clients to help them be efficient as well. So that was a yeah more of a business insight into the kind of business that I'd like to be running with you. So I'll move on to objectives. I've set three objectives again for next week. The first is to deliver the second week of group coaching calls. I'll also need to publish course content for week three of the course. And then my third objective is that I think it's time to start looking at selling the next version of the course. I've been getting a lot of feedback, firstly through the sales process, and then also as I'm delivering the course, just from the questions that are coming up. And the purpose of a beta course is to roll out another version that's improved by all of that feedback. So next week, I want to start implementing that by updating our landing page to reflect the feedback and then also put in place a strategy to sell the next version of the course. And what about you, Wayne? So I also have three objectives for the next week. And first, it's really around, and maybe this is something I should have done initially, but it's to really get clear on the problem we're trying to solve. And I think I might have an opportunity to better express this through a meeting with AMF, our CMO, to brainstorm a marketing strategy. And within that, I think we can provide some more education and get comments and feedback through a similar process that you use to communicate your course offering, but through a series of Facebook or LinkedIn videos with some educational content and questions that can act as ideas or thought starters in helping us create the sales copy. I'm also going to set an objective to specifically time block six hours of heads down focused effort to this project. Similar to yourself, I was a bit derailed, but for me, it was more due to a lack of poor time management. I really underestimated the time that would be required to meet with our software partner and allocate toward the training and the development of the other objectives that I had set last week. And I think this week, I'm going to be certainly more committed within those set time blocks that will be uninterrupted due to other tasks. And the last is to finish out and really gain mastery of the platform futurely that we'll be implementing as our partner within this service offering and continue to progress through and finalize those certifications. That's great. And I just wanted to touch on a couple of things that you talked about throughout the podcast. There was a few things that really resonated with me. And one was the time blocking, which you just mentioned then. And I love that idea. And I do that some weeks. I feel like my weeks are really well planned and it makes such a difference when there is time blocked out. And you also know 
whether it's achievable or not, when you plan out your whole week and other weeks, it's been, especially recently when my last couple of weeks have been a bit derailed, (laughs) it's been harder to do that. So that's something that I'm going to task myself with as well. And I also really like what you were talking about in understanding the problem. So what problem are we solving for a client and really digging into that to make sure that we're solving the right problem and that then makes the sales process easier. So I just wanted to touch on those points that they really resonated with me. Yeah, and I'm amazed that I hadn't earlier aligned a bit closer to the process that you had utilized in developing the initial course offering. I, I really saw a lot of engagement within those initial posts, pre-sales. I'm interested in having an opportunity to chat with AMF and work something similar to see if we get the same great response as we did from the course. And I'll just add one other comment around that. It was when I had the sales page up for the cash flow and bookkeeping course, that was when the feedback started to get really specific because I had instances where people weren't buying and then I could ask why and really understand it. So I think we would have been through about four or five iterations of the course landing page or the sales page. And as soon as we had it up, that's when we could get that really specific feedback. So I think you having that proposal where there's something tangible that people can say yes or no or provide feedback to, I think that will, that's a really good step in the right direction in terms of solving this what is the critical problem question. Well, did you have any final thoughts that you wanted to add before we wrap up? I'll just say, again, I'm excited to see the progress of both the course and this new virtual CFO offering and committed, again, to being accountable to you and our listeners in achieving these objectives for next week. So thanks so much for putting this together and giving us this time to chat. Thanks, Wayne. Looking forward to next week. Take care. By the way, are you wanting support to get paid and make better decisions? We've put together a zero small business toolkit, including cash flow forecast templates and guide to setting up zero. Grab it for free at beingninjas.com slash zero toolkit. And that's X-E-R-O-T-O-O-L-K-I-T.